Thanks for inviting me uh, to, to join in. Uh, I'm gonna be covering, as Raja mentioned, uh, at least one tool that we've used for animation uh, called Vyond. And I, Cara, I also saw your note uh, about including Wii Video. I'm happy to include that uh, because often the using the two tools is not actually so dissimilar and you can see what I mean by that. Um, I'll share my screen and we can get started. Can everybody see my screen? Yes, yeah. we can. Great. Yes. I'm actually going to start on something a little bit more familiar, um, which is just talking about PowerPoint presentations or you know basic slide presentations. Because with a lot of the tools that we've created, or th that not created, but the tools that we have access to, um, if you can make a PowerPoint presentation, you can probably make a video like that. And, and a lot of the prep work is the same. You think in terms of scenes or individual images, which in the case of a PowerPoint presentation, they take the form of slides, right? You walk through and you have a, you have a brief period of time to convey a, a message or a piece of content. Um, with, the, with the other tools that I'm going to be showing here, that, that's pretty much the same thing. Um, okay, so the first one that I'm showing here is, is Beyond, uh, which is an animation tool. I wonder if I can just go back to the home page so you can see what it looks like. Um, Beyond started out as a tool for making uh, business pitch videos. Um, but it, the, the tools that it included actually made it pretty good for a lot of different types of, uh, storytelling. The, the benefit of having an animation tool, uh, as your, as the way that you're communicating your, your story is that it allows you to fill in a bunch of images and content that you might not already have. Um, and, and what do I mean by that? Like beyond gives you a lot of, uh, different sets um, so you have characters that you can create and uh, backgrounds that you can fill in and so if your message is talking about people interacting with each other or visiting locations like a doctor's office or 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 you know existing in a city and you don't have a picture of that or an image of that you can create it using drag and drop tools so you have an option to like create a lot of different visual scenes and, and put it in front of your user um, the, the tool, like I said, was originally for businesses to create, uh, pitches, but we've ended up using it. And I, I think they are now expanding their target audience to people who are trying to create tutorials, who are trying, um, you know, uh, convey concepts and for people who are trying to tell stories. Um, so we've ended up using them and now here I will go back to... login. We've been using it within the Helper Hub for uh, a series of videos about developmental evaluation, but uh, Partners Jordan um, has also used it to announce um, the uh, Campaign Idol winners uh, from 2019. And I'll show you the, the product that they created. So remember how I said that, you know, this tool is actually quite similar to uh, a PowerPoint presentation, well, you can see a number of ways that that's true. You work with a canvas like this uh, that matches the screen. And then instead of a series of slides, like you see on the left-hand side here, you have a series of um, scenes, which you stack left to right. Um, down below, you can see that there's a time counter. So as the seconds progress, you see how long each scene lasts, and you have a little slider that can determine. By the way, I'm going to be editing something. This is, this is a copy, so don't worry. The original is still intact. Um, so you can take something that's seven seconds and drop it down to four seconds, and you can see everything moves along with it. Um, one thing that's a little different from PowerPoint is that in addition to audio, uh, video assets, you also have audio assets. So you can see here that uh, the creator of this video included uh, a music track and then occasionally would include sound effects to put in 
that would accompany different um, visual elements on the screen. But what you can see is not too different um, from a PowerPoint presentation. You basically have conceived, and here, I wonder if I can play this on mute. Probably not. But you can see that the marker here progresses along to each individual slide. Um, let's talk a little bit about how you can create elements. Here again, it's not too different from what you might see in um, a PowerPoint presentation. You have the option to choose a blank scene which is just like a, a white uh, blank background, like your default slide in a PowerPoint thing, or you can choose from a template. And um, I will choose from a template for this. So um, depending on the thing that you are trying to convey in any given slide or scene, you might want to leverage some pre-existing templates. Um, and you can see that they organize in this product templates from making uh, calls to action, which are basically uh, text with icons with a very simple message like do something, <laughs> buy the product, uh, you know, join now, something like that. Something where you're giving an instruction to a user and you want the focus to just be on the words and the message being delivered. Then there are uh, places where like they will come up with particular concepts and again this is like uh, their the original market for this were people selling things and making ads so you've got ideas like catering healthcare, uh, industrial settings etc um, but sometimes you can also make use of uh, the the pre-made concepts that they put together and I really like these things just as inspiration um, so like this particular scene is about abundance so this person is just getting a whole bunch of food. This is about uh, <laughs> its accomplishment, but it's using a phone uh, game to basically uh, progress. Um, amazing fortune, somebody finds a money bag. Uh, bait, people are all going for a particular thing. And even if you can't use an individual um, scene verbatim, um, let me see here. So let, you can modify a, a scene that somebody else has created. So I'm gonna use this as an example. We're loading up something that's called Falling Profits. And in the scene, you can see that it has two assets. One is uh, this gentleman character, and one is this billboard. Actually, there's three. There's the billboard and then a graphic that goes above it. Now, all of these things can be swapped and mixed and matched. So if I click on this, this guy, there's a little replace icon and it pulls up this window on the, the, the side. If I wanted to, I could, I could replace this guy with another character, with a prop, with a chart, a piece of text. Uh, in this case, I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna replace him with the character. Say, I'm not looking for a business suit man, I want somebody a little bit more casual. I can click on casual and load up a pre-made uh, round of stock characters. So I could have a lady in a, in a blouse or a dude with glasses, or a gentleman with a mustache. Uh, and they all are, will adopt the same pose and do the exact same thing as the guy with the, um, with the business suit. Um, if I wanted to, I could even create a character, um, which I can, I can show how that works at a, at a later time. So that if you wanna make somebody who looks exactly like, say, Raja for a presentation or something like that. You could do that. You, it gives you the tools to make your own particular character. Generally speaking, I've been able to get by pretty well with stock characters. You also can control what these characters are doing. So in this case, I'm just gonna hit preview. You can see that this guy comes into the scene and is pointing. Uh, if I want him to do another action besides pointing, Beyond gives me a whole set of different options to, to pick from. So it can be just, uh, static poses, like he is, is pointing upwards. I don't know, maybe he's shushing. Yes, he's, he's saying be quiet. Um, or you're, you're standing with your arms out. Uh, but you can also, uh, a lot of these uh, options that Vion gives you are animated tools. 
So what is this guy doing? Uh, does he have a shake weight? What is this? Banging gavel. All right, so I could use this if he were a judge. I'll lift him up and apply. And now uh, if I played the scene, he would enter into it and bang his gavel. <laughs> and there are a bunch of different options that you have available. Um, so you can search for things if you're looking for something in particular, like handshake. And it gives you a list of options, both for standing in and wheelchair accessible. Um, you can use, um, I don't know, wave. Point. So they have hundreds of different options for what your character can do in a given scene. And some of them are even animated. Aha. Yeah. And you can see a little preview here of what the, the thing is. <laughs> this guy is very happy about the downward trend in numbers. <laughs> we are totally failing. Um, OK. Um, you can also see that this guy entered in from the, from the side. Um, you can control enter effects and exit effects. Um, basically, if you want to add a little bit more motion to your scene, which is a good idea, like the human eye gets bored pretty quickly when things are static, but if you have things animating and moving as much as possible, then there's more, uh, more to catch the, the eye and hold somebody's attention. Uh, you can do an enter effect, uh, where uh, in this case, this person is sliding to the right, but you can have him pop in, uh, which looks like this, somebody just pops, or you can have somebody um, appear via stripes. Let's see, this guy is getting blurry and then coming in. That looks good to me. Um, and this thing, uh, this, this prop also came in and uh, it's probably a slide up. Yeah, uh, say I do want it to slide, but I'm gonna modify it and slide. Uh, I'm gonna have a hand slide it in from the left. Now, when I hit play, this guy should fade in. Or no, oops, that didn't change anything. And slide left. Ah, I'll have this guy fade in. Save. Yeah, now this guy fades in and you saw the hand slide in. So a lot of the times you can recycle a, a scene uh, that's already been made that generally conveys the concept that you want to convey and then just modify it to, um, to, to change what it is that you're looking for. But what if we wanted to create a scene from scratch? Uh, we can do that too. I'm going to create another blank scene. And the first thing I'm, I'm going to try to do is generate a background. Now I have a bunch of different options for this. I could import an image if I wanted to um, using the upload button. And you can see all the different things that we've used this to do in the past. So if I wanted to just have um, you know, a picture of hands or something in the background, I could do that. Uh, it also comes, Beyond also comes with a bunch of stock backgrounds. So I could choose locations like an airplane cabin or um, <laughs> an amusement park or uh, a generic city. And depending on your environment, that might be perfect for you. You could also create a background using stock images. So again, going over to the left-hand side and looking at props, if I just wanted to get a building, I could drag an apartment building onto here and just like in uh, PowerPoint, drag images around. So now I'm on some sort of a city block. I could also bring in a character coming out of her house and saying hello. Um, oh, that is a pregnant lady, in fact. Uh, and a man, this is her husband, and he's wearing pajamas. So you can see you can drag and drop things in fairly easily uh, and, and create a scene from scratch if you need to. Um, let's see, what else would be helpful here? Eric, there, can I add something really fast? Please. Um, so in terms of strategy, as far as like um, 
telling stories and using Beyond. Beyond is like many, a lot of journalists have used similar kinds of tools. Um, we used to use uh, their, their story bench now. Um, there's like a few where essentially they use a very similar format of slides and, and audio. I know Derek's going to get into audio. Before you start doing this, you should really think about um, whether you want your story to be an audio driven story. That is that the narrative of your story is what's driving it. Um, or if you want it to be more visually driven, right? Um, in which case you have to be very intentional about the images that you choose. If it's an audio driven story, then the, any visual that you put in has to match the audio, right? If it's a visual driven story, then it's the other way around. Essentially the, the audio has to enhance the, the visuals. And, and what you want people to focus on isn't so much on what they hear, it's on what they see, right? And I think there's a really different um, set of expectations for listeners or viewers um, when they go to a story that's either audio driven or video driven. And, and when you go to um, a visually driven, like when you go to YouTube, the best example is like, you'll see some videos, like tutorials, that um really focus a lot on like you know if you're learning to do something <laughs> like maybe you're learning to change out a tire on your car right like you're you're really most of the time what you're doing is you're paying attention to what's being done visually in front of you you want to know how to change a tire on your specific model of your car you're not listening so much to what they're saying you're just watching them right and that's a very different experience then if you go uh, online and you watch like uh, something on YouTube where somebody is telling you what happened and say during a crime scene, right? Like if somebody witnessed something, then you're really listening to what they're saying. They're telling you, they're guiding you through that story. And so you really need to think about which one of those things your story is going to be, like what's gonna drive it. I think that's a really okay. good point. And the, what you were saying, Cara, about like some, some works being audio driven, there's a certain process that comes out of generating an audio driven story. So for example, when we were generating, um, you know, Cara and Rasha collaborated together to create uh, uh, scripts for our developmental evaluation videos, where we're basically introducing a bunch of concepts related to developmental evaluation and prompting certain questions that a practitioner of DE uh, could ask in order to do their work more effectively. And the very first element of this product um, was not, you know, diving into beyond, but to generate a script. Um, Kara and Rasha worked together to create a script, to, to simplify it down, to make it as quick and as direct as possible. And once they had developed a script, they used an audio recording tool uh, to record somebody speaking it. And that was the very first thing that was imported into Beyond when we started creating the, the, um, the video. So we pulled, uh, I believe, now this is, this is Rasha's voice. Innovation is most needed when people's rights are restricted. So, I don't know if you could hear that there, but that was the, the foundational base of the entire video that was pulled in first. And then every scene that we picked went to align with the words that Rasha was saying. So here, when she's talking about the Innovation for Change network, we have an image of the Innovation for Change logo and a network of people emerging. Here's the point where she says innovation. And we find a picture of or I think in this one, it was like experimentation. And we find a picture of people at the Central Asia Hubs hackathon uh, creating stuff. Um, this is a, uh, an image about people being restricted uh, in their freedoms. And I knew what to select because I was looking at the script and listening to the words and I knew, okay, 
in this in these few seconds that Rasha was talking about this thing, these are the images that should accompany it. I think there might be a chat question. Oh, sorry, Derek. I, I realize you, you can't see the chat as easily. I was just yeah. suggesting maybe showing them the script because we yeah. referenced it a couple of times. So this is the script for DE3. Innovation is most needed when people's rights are restricted. Um, the Innovation for Change Network, I foresee, uses social innovation to test solutions and solve civic space problems. And I believe that those four parts of the sentence make up, oops, bah, I always do this. Um, do it. Do you, do you use the, the multi-column one, the actual video script? Because that's the audio script, right? I ended up using the, the audio script. Um, oh, you're not using the video scripts at all? Well, in the last one, yeah, like I mainly l lean on the audio script. Uh, like I also, yeah, yes, I know what you're talking about. I think a little bit further down here. Yeah. Yeah. So like. That's, that's a video script. That's the video script. Mm -hmm. This is the audio and that's the video? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, so, this is your typical video script because then you break down the different elements to what um, each line is. Let me let me pull up script one because in that one, Kara, you you worked out a full video script, I think. Um, well, I've been doing it for all of them. So if you haven't been using them, then then I, I won't do it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? No, and the I, I do use it as inspiration, but sometimes I find like I can't replicate the image. Anyway, um, let's yeah. use let's use a, a complete example though because I think it is valuable. Um, have you shown them? in previous classes, how, how these things are made? Do you want to talk about this, Carl? No, 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 I haven't. Um, I, well, I've mentioned it in the past, how, it, but we haven't gone into detail. So the way it works with video work, and you might have done this already because some of you have experience with um, doing video productions. Uh, you know, you, you normally, there's different elements. Video is the most complex way of constructing a, and assembling a story because you've got visual elements, you've got audio elements, you've got textual elements, you've got like, you know, so you've got so many different things coming together and it's all in one sequence. The thing that Derek's showing you with Vion at the bottom, that's called a sequence, right? The sequence, um, if you remember when we were talking about arcs, like narrative arcs, um, in, in films, that's essentially the narrative flow is all under there, right? And so um, it's broken up into basically three acts, right? Um, and so this is essentially the sequence. Um, and so scene one is what you would see. What, um, and this, this helps you when you're producing it, uh, be organized about what goes with what, right? So scene one, the actual literal slide or you know, scene that you, you, you put up would be the logo, right? Um, and then you would you would have the audio. Um, in this case, you have Russia saying, "An innovation for change. We're helping people learn how to adapt and innovate." And and you'll see how there's some things that are underlined. When somebody usually, what I recommend if you're doing an a, a, like an audio driven story, you want to spend a lot of time on writing up the script um, and making it very simple, not simplified. Don't oversimplify, but simple. Because what happens is that how we comprehend things that are told to us, um, it has to be much simpler when you hear it, right? And, and that's why um, when you hear radio, the sentences are usually shorter, right? You don't have these like long strings of sentences put together by semicolons in radio. It just, you can't do it. In video, it's very similar. And so you also underline specific phrases that are very important to enunciate. And, and essentially, the way it's, if you see the script, I think you can go back up, Derek. If you mm. see the, the audio script, uh, normally it would be, I think Russia got the other version, but um, you would see a bunch of underlines so that any listener could understand what your story is just from reading the underlined words, which are essentially keywords that you're emphasizing. So if you go back down, um, when she does the voiceover, she's gonna slow down and enunciate those underlined words. So at Innovation for Change, 
for helping people learn how to adapt and innovate to solve civic space problems, right? So that, yeah. that, it, it, that's very intentional what she's doing when she records that. And on the video side or the visual side, what Derek would be doing is he would be looking for images that go with innovation for change, something that's adapting, something that's innovating, something that's civic space. Do you right. see that flow? And I have to like underline the, the process that Kara is describing is kind of essential. Um, you know, when we, if we're writing something academic or we, we're not really limited in terms of like speaking it out loud, our sentences can tend to be fairly long and long sentences are very hard to convey visually because they're complex. They're showing, um, you know, they, they literally take place over a long period of time. So there's a lot of content that needs to be, be shown. You can see over here on the, by the time it gets to uh, the video script, um, it's broken down into very, very direct, simple context. Innovation for change, we're helping people learn how to adapt and innovate. Um, that sort of thing is comparatively much easier to like display over time. Um, so here again, like some of the hardest part of creating a video is not so much actually getting in the tool, but the pre-work that's necessary in order to like get the content um, that you can then visualize. Um, so as you're going through this process of like developing a video script, this column actually is easy and uh, useful. And Cara, I, I promise you, I, I do use these elements here because a lot of times I need, uh, I need to find an asset or a, a piece of inspiration. But this can tell you the thing that you should go out and um, acquire and import. Like, okay, we're definitely gonna need the Innovation for Change logo. Um, we might need something, uh, developmental evaluation. I might need a scene that says something about DE. We might need pictures of people doing things, visual patterns. Um, I get a lot of the assets that I use from Beyond itself, but sometimes Beyond's, you know, library of things is not very complete. Uh, and you need to go out and find other, other things. Um, so there are a couple of different resources that I can go to. One is shareicon.net. It's a website of icons that people uh, upload and provide either with like an attribution license or sometimes uh, Creative Commons, no attribution, just you can use my image for, for free and that's fine. Um, and you can search for things like um, phone. Um, and get a whole bunch of different types of icons. And these are, these are deliberately icons. So they're supposed to be, you know, uh, they're supposed to be simple. They're supposed to convey information with a minimal amount of lines. And oftentimes, you know, having icons and symbols be your graphic representation um, makes it easier to absorb content, especially if you're moving rapid fire, because you don't have to con understand a complex image. You can get a very simple one. Um, and people can come up with simple images for things like meeting or prize. Um, and you, you can get a, a really deep library of things here. Um, I know Kara, one of her things to do is um, uh, search Creative Commons. So like, where's a, I'll, I'll just do. Yeah, you can do Creative Commons or you can go into Google Images. There you go. Right. So if you go Google Images and then use the tool uh, tool section and then go to Usage Rights label, labeled for reuse, uh, then Google will do its best to provide you with a bunch of images that appear to be um, usable for free. And uh, a lot of the things that come up here are Pixabay. Uh, most Pixabay images are, are free to use without attribution. Um, one word of advice is like it often uh, if you're if you really care about this sort of thing and you want to make sure you can just go in and check the image uh, under her home site or on the, the site that it's coming from uh, and there is um, 
if Pixabay loads, here, I'll try another non-Pixabay thing. English.kremlin.ru. <laughs> um, oftentimes, they, uh, the, the site, if it is in fact public domain, will provide um, the, the copyright information. In this particular case, this, uh, this appears to be a, uh, an image straight from the president of Russia's website. So I'm not really sure what the attribution rules are uh, for government websites. Um, but I will close it down. Here's the Pixabay one. And you can see over here, Pixabay, free for commercial use, no attribution required. So oftentimes when creating a video, I just find myself going to the internet and spending a long time on Creative Commons websites. You can also go to Media Wiki. Uh, there? Yeah. Hello? Hey. Uh, I just shared with you a, a website called unsplash.com. Uh, it's uh, uh, like a, a library of uh, images that can be used for personal or commercial uses with, with no problems related to copyright. Uh, it's, these photos are uncopyrighted photos. so. You're free to use them for whatever awesome. you want. Yeah. Okay. This, thank you for this. I'd never seen this before, but it looks great. And it looks like it breaks it down into wallpapers, textures. Yeah. Um, yeah, you can, mm, mm, you can give it a try. Like. Yeah. Do you, have you used this? Do you use this in your work? Abdelgan? Yeah. Yeah. I'm using it like on daily basis. Yeah. Yeah. You can like, you can try to type in something like innovation or technology or whatever and see what really. yeah, yeah this is one of my favorite sites too it's so visual this is great so this is these these particular images are also good because a lot of them yeah like <laughs> at innovation for change we do love our uh, our sticky notes so this this looks fairly representative of our stuff this is also you know if you're building websites or things like that this is great to have a visual asset Oh, somebody help this person. Um, so Upsplash, that's a great resource. I'm adding that to my toolbox. There's Pixabay, and then uh, another resource that I like to use just to get around Trilogy is Pexels.com. Um, so you have your, and in fact, the design for these websites looks identical. I wouldn't be surprised if they were all owned by the same person or made by the same company. Um, <laughs> but, but there you are. So you have a bunch of different visual assets that you can use and recycle in your work um, if you don't have your own video, or even if you do have your own video and audio. Sometimes you just need a little bit uh, more visual content to convey the image that you care about. Um, so I think that I'm gonna leave it there with Vyond, except to say um, that Innovation for Change Helper Hub, we have a license to this tool uh, that will last through November. So if you have a video or if you just wanna try making it, uh, making something, um, you know, uh, follow up with us and we'd be happy to share the username and password and you can create a video on your own uh, for, the, for the next month. Um, the other video uh, tool that Kara mentioned was something called WeVideo, and it's a, it's a tool that we've been using. Um, uh, this is for more traditional video editing where you, you have a lot of video from your smartphone or from your camera, and you want to edit it together to create um, uh, something with camera footage. So unlike Beyond, it doesn't give you animation tools, but it does give you a little bit more by the way of tools for like slicing and dicing video, cropping and, and things like that. Um, here's an example of a video that I made at the Innovation Festival, just really quickly to, to, to show what the first day looked like. Um, let's see if I can load it up. Okay, so it looks a little bit similar. Uh, here, your canvas is on the right-hand side. The left-hand side shows all of the assets that you have. Um, so in this case, music, uh, transitions, and then things that I uploaded. Looks like, okay. Um, 
we're using the free license for this. So there are some um, title cards that uh, are not available now that we're using the free license. Also, there's a little watermark here, uh, which is not great for the free version. Um, upgrading is not too expensive. I think you can get this for $5 a month uh, for an individual user, which is fairly affordable if you need to create a video. Um, but, you know, uh, we're, we'll just show what it looks like to, to use the free version. So in this case, I uploaded a bunch of um, video assets for, for day one. I was walking around with my smartphone and I took a bunch of 20, maybe 30 second clips of things that were happening. And we video lets you play them and preview them at fairly low quality. And if we were just to make a video about this for 20 straight seconds, it probably would be kind of boring. Um, um, but the value of WeVideo is that it allows you to pull a video in and then crop it. So instead of this full minute of video, you can see that the cropped thing only consists of about 20 seconds. Um, just like with WeVideo though, you stack your, your images left to right and then the cursor moves across. You can hear my audio track here. The innovation festival down here at the bottom members of civil society from and it's cutting from the different video assets business one after another group discussions with little bits of transitions one group shared what drove them um like with we video you can select a, a video and then apply effects to it um you can uh lengthen or decrease the size of the clip. Uh, and you can also do layers here. Let me see if it'll let me, um, let me zoom. No, it's a little hard to see here. Ah, maybe I can collapse this. There we go. But there are actually many layers to, um, the, the content that I'm creating. And in general, if something is higher up in a layered stack, it is more visible. So you can see that there are actually two video, video clips playing at the same place in time here, but it's the, this one up top, the highest up one is the one that takes precedence. Um, as time goes on, there's more and more video tools out there on the web that put a premium on usability and user friendliness. I'm actually using, I think, the, um, the quote unquote professional version of this tool that gives me the most tools. But if I wanted to create a new video, um, here, I'll see if it'll let me do this. Dashboard. I think there's a way that I can swap between modes and make this a little bit gentler. Switch to storyboard. Yeah, so storyboarding is a much simpler version of this thing where you don't, it doesn't have you worry about layers or anything like that. It, you just drop in content and then mess around with the duration of each slide. And then if you want to move from like storyboarding once you have the basics of your, your video presentation in place, you can uh, switch to a timeline-based thing, which allows you to do more complex stuff. Um, I'm gonna pause here, uh, I think. Yeah, the only thing I'll say is that like I've, so we've used WeVideo for creating uh, the Innovation Festival. You can see the Africa Hub has used it to create a couple of, um, uh, videos as well. Um, you can use the services, uh, the, the Helper Hubs account, or you can create your own and subscribe to it. Like I said, uh, $5 a month is, is not so bad if you find yourself in need of a, a very user-friendly uh, tool. That, by the way, also, like the other value of doing stuff on the web is that you don't need uh, a high-powered computer like the one Kara has, for example, um, to, to edit video in-house. There are servers online that are taking care of all the, the, the processing. So even if you have like a very cheap Chromebook, 
or something like that, you can create a fairly uh, professional looking video uh, using web-based tools. I'll stop there uh, and see if there are any questions or comments. Or Cara, if you want to add something to, to what you've seen here. Yeah, yeah, no, I do. Um, when I started, so I, I do, I've always had a, a desktop, um, which has a little bit more horsepower than the laptop, because I've, I've been, you know, I'm a journalist, so I, I do a lot of, in a doc, I do a lot of documentaries. I haven't, I think we video is a really good and similar types of um, resources are good for doing web uh, video, web based video. And I think one of the nicest thing when I started doing video, they didn't have these kinds of options um, for doing shorter, like three minute, three to five minute videos. I think this this is a really great solution. I I haven't heard of anybody using this for documentary work, but I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if somebody's stitching together a lot of little video for documentary. So uh, it really depends on what kind of story you're telling. Like when we were uh, editing La Camioneta, which is the story of the school bus that. Um, you know, was commissioned in the decommissioned in the U.S. and taken to Guatemala. I mean, that required. <laughs> I don't know. I think we had like a total of twenty. Uh, I think in the end it was about twenty drive hard drives, external hard drives. Each of them was two terabytes, three ter terabytes at the time, uh, just to do that film. So yeah. that's that's just like a lot of video, right? Because it's high resolution video. Um, and I think that's a completely different type of story. Documentaries require a lot more resources um, mm -hmm. to tell that story. Um, but when we did the trailer for La Camioneta, which ended up being two minutes, 50 seconds, something like that, it, it was definitely a lot smaller and we were using lower res files. But we could have easily have done it in Wii video to tell the story of that longer documentary. So you have a lot of resources available to you now um, that don't require much in the way of, you know, your own pocketbook. But it, I think what it does, though, <laughs> is that you really um, have to do more planning on your end. Just because you, you can actually construct these stories, you still have to do the same kind of planning uh, to construct what the story is about, right? Because, you, you know, you could easily throw together a bunch of photos or random videos and then does that make a story right simply because it's in a sequence and so i think that's where you get into where we are now is that there's a lot of noise very little signal in in the world of multimedia online meaning that there's a lot of people that are using these tools but they're not really telling stories they're not telling um stories that make you want to change things, right? Because those kinds of stories really require a little bit more planning. Uh, they have to really, they require you thinking about the message, thinking about like, you know, what is it in my society that I want to change? The whole civic story component, right? That just doesn't happen by throwing a, a random set of photos or things that you like um, onto a platform and then adding some audio you haven't thought about. So I think the work still needs to be done on your end as the storyteller to really think about the message, think about the story you're telling and put it together in the most compelling way to the people that you want to listen to, to it, right? Or to watch it, 